Ciao. I'd like to establish a connection between the word color and your mind. Please. No, that's fine. Alice and Jared. And... Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, no, okay. see, now people know, though. Now people know that we're still doing video, even yeah. though they can't see it. Allison Sheridan is here with us, everybody. Uh, Podfeet.com is the website. Nosillacast, N-O-S-I-L-L-A. Nosillacast is the podcast. Uh, older than, uh, than Mac OS can. There are a few of those. Do you think we're all like holding out for the others to drop off? <laughs> well, yeah, now we can't stop, yeah, right? Right, right. No you... matter what we do, Adam Christensen will always win. Well. Like, you can't catch him. He's the one we have to target. And then after that... <laughs> Sorry. I that love would Adam. probably do it. Yeah, I, I love Adam. I don't, I, would, I don't even like to joke about that. That's terrible. He's such a nice guy. And I'm like, oh, we got to take him out. <laughs> ah, it's the world today, Allison. It's the world today. Right. Uh, the world this week. Normal times, we'd be saying the world this week was rocked by the Apple event, even if nothing was announced, because, uh, you know, everybody gets excited. Everybody goes there. The cameras are all there, all that stuff. And of course, we're not doing that anymore, or at least we're not doing that right now. Would you like to talk about things that were announced at the event? Would you like to talk about the event itself? Would you like to talk about something else entirely? I do have something to talk about on the event that it, it, it's sort of an argument I had or, or differing of opinion, which I thought was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. The um, I had Lori Gill of Imore on Chit Chat Across the Pond, one of my other podcasts. And uh, one of the things I brought up was I said, I think it's I think it's really cool that Apple is starting to make products for people who don't have giant bills they can light on fire for everything. So mm -hmm. like the SE line, like the the iPhone SE and now the the uh, Apple Watch SE. And I didn't think that that would be a contrary opinion, but she had a, she had a really interesting perspective on the iPhone SE. I'm sorry, the Apple Watch. Apple Watch SE. SE. Yeah, I keep doing the same thing. Yeah, it's going to be tough. So, but what she said was really interesting. She said she's actually kind of angry about it because they kept the Apple Watch 3 at 199 mm -hmm. and then came out with the SE at, what is it, 279, I think? Yep. And so what they actually did was they came out with a product to convince you not to buy the Apple Watch 3 and instead buy this one that is $80 more. Mm -hmm. So they actually brought the the price up by creating this low end watch. The bottom price is now two seventy nine. When it yesterday it was one ninety nine. You were perfectly happy with an a, an Apple Watch Series three because hey, it's only one ninety nine. It's the entry level model. That's great. But now you just look at it, you go well, I can't buy that because I got to buy the middle one. And now they've just brought the bottom price up. What they've done in the past is they've taken the old version and then priced it at the one ninety nine. Yeah. So it was. It just kind of surprised me. I hadn't thought about it that way. Yeah, I, I mean, I get it. I honestly sort of thought the same thing. Not that they did anything nefarious there, but when I heard that it's like you know one ninety nine or two seventy nine, well, that's just saying I just just spend two seventy nine. It's only eighty bucks. It's only eighty dollars. Yep. I mean, of course there are people, and I, you know I've been one of these people in the past. Well, I mean, I talked about it on this show yesterday. I'm not getting the Series 6. I would like the Series 6. I still have the Series 3. It, today's world makes me wary of spending $400 that I don't need to spend in one pop, you know? Um, right. So, I mean, and I, I remember times, dude, I remember times when I had like 20 bucks in my bank account. I mean, it was a long time ago, but $80 isn't nothing to some people. But then are those people spending $200 on the Apple Watch? I don't know that it was nefarious. I mean, they are certainly making the... You know what it is? I'd like a medium popcorn and a medium Coke. Oh, do you want to upsize that for a dollar more? I mean, that's really what it is. <laughs> um, with a bit more staying power, I think, because even though Apple is selling the Apple Watch Series 3 as something that you can buy right now and know it's going to last, it's, it's three models back. I mean, is it really... How much longer is it going to last? Right, right. So, but by keeping that one at the bottom of the price, mm -hmm. then they have lowered, they, they've raised the floor because you're not going to buy that one. Right. The, the other thing that's one of the classic marketing things is you make three models so that people will pick the middle one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the, you, know, you make four, they don't buy anything at all. <laughs> it's like, Whoa, can't do it. Can't do it. There's no medium. I don't know what to do. Yeah. No, what you do though is you actually, uh, you make the uh, Apple Watch Series 3 at uh, $279. 
you make the uh, you make the Apple Watch SE four hundred ninety nine, and then the only other thing you have is the Hermes. And so then you're like, <laughs> okay, well, I guess all the problems. Guess I'll get the middle one then, because yeah, that's a that's a little steep for a watch. You know, when you talk about having had twenty bucks in your pocket, I I think about that a lot. That that this this game that we play, you mm-hmm. and me and all the other Mac podcasters, Apple podcasters. We're, we're sitting in this position where we're always talking about things that cause people to spend vast amounts of money. And I feel kind of guilty about it because I know there's people listening who can't afford to do it. And maybe they make these choices to buy these things that they don't really need because we keep getting everybody excited about it. I'm not going to stop doing it. Mm -hmm. But I do think about that from time to time of the influence that I may be having on people who, you know what, your your series four is fine. You don't need a series six. Stop worrying about it. And and, but yet everything we talk about is, oh, look what he can do now. Always on. You must buy this, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, I'm actually pretty upfront about the fact that I buy almost nothing until it's time to buy a new thing. Do you know what I mean? Like um, Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Chaffin was on the show yesterday. He had the Apple Watch Series 5. He is waiting for his Apple Watch Series 6. He has an iPad. He has an iPad Air. And he has an iPad Pro. And I think he may have another iPad Pro as well. Now, for his living, for his profession, he writes about this stuff. So it makes sense that he would have it. I assume he's taking tax write-offs and things like that. I tend to be like on the other end of stuff. I don't even remember how long I had my last iPad before I got my most recent iPad. I know it was long enough that it won't take new updates anymore. It wouldn't go to iPad OS 13 or whatever it was before I, iPad OS 14. It wouldn't make the iPad OS jump. Mm-hmm. So, right. My Apple Watch Series 3, I got it because I started worrying about, you know, heart things and it could like do better stuff for your heart. I want the 6 not because I mean, I want it want it because the screen is bigger, but I really want it because of the blood oxygen stuff and because of the ECG. Because, you know, uh, the the river of time only runs one way, and I want to know when I'm going to get there and how long I can stall. <laughs> but, you know, it's not something I have to have tomorrow, so I'm not going to have it. I kind of worry about that, but I also kind of figure that the people who are listening aren't listening because they don't know if they should buy something. I think they're listening because they're Apple fans, and either they're Apple fans who want to know more about Apple stuff because they're thinking about buying the next thing, or because it's aspirational, or because they're reading from uh, listening from a business standpoint. I don't know. I don't personally feel like I do a lot of the. This is the greatest thing because nine times out of ten, I don't have the latest and greatest. I've got you know <laughs> whatever I needed when I needed it, and uh, and I'll be holding onto that for you know three to seven years, depending. Let me ask you a question though, because you're a big proponent of iPad. I want to make sure that we we talk about that as well. Was there anything mm-hmm. that you saw in the new iPads that were announced that that you're like? well, I'm going to have the latest and greatest, or is it just like, eh, it's fine, and you know, when I need an iPad, I'll see what's available. Well, they did such a weird turnaround here. Um, I'm a huge fan of the huge iPad. So I have an iPad Pro, the 12.9-inch iPad Pro, and uh, for I am more of the always buy the new thing kind of a, kind of a person, but mm-hmm. the most recent iPad was not much of a big difference. It had LiDAR or something like that, the one they announced just a few months ago on the iPad Pros. So I didn't upgrade. So now mine is a couple of years old and I'm like, oh, well, maybe I need a new one. But what they introduced was actually in some ways better than what I have. And yet it's not a pro, but they didn't come out with a 12.9. So I've got there is there was no iPad for me to buy. But right. that didn't make me not really, really like what they did. I think they did a, a, a fantastic job. I think the, that um, what is it now? It's in a 10.9 inch iPad Air. I think that's a spectacular uh, product. I think the fact that it fits the Magic Keyboard, that's a that's a great design decision. The things it's missing don't seem to be all that important, at least to me. I don't know, LiDAR, I'm not a big VRAR kind of a person yet, so mm-hmm. I don't know that that's going to be that important. So I think that's a really terrific iPad. And that, that entry-level 329 iPad is a killer product. That thing's amazing. <laughs> and uh, you pair that with, uh, I've got the um, Logitech uh, $50 pen or crayon that right. works with the, uh, like I've got it for um, an iPad mini. And you pair that with that device, you've got almost everything. I mean, that's a that's an amazing little device. Uh, so I think I think the, the products they came out with were great and they didn't cost, you know, five house payments. Were you but surprised? they weren't for me. 
Yeah. Well, no, I get that. Although it's kind of funny to me that you, you're like, well, LiDAR is not a big deal because LiDAR, it feels like it's going to be one of those things kind of like Face ID was for me in iPhone 10. That year I got the iPhone 8 Plus. And I can't remember why it chose that. I think it was because it wasn't a thousand dollars because it was like, you know, 700 or 750 or something like that. That's, that and, was its virtue. Yeah. And I thought, well, Face ID, who cares? And then they started doing all this other uh, development that incorporated the Face ID camera. And I thought, oh, OK, now I hate my phone. Um, I still held it for a couple of years because I didn't need the other stuff. There was no point. But I was a little surprised that LiDAR didn't turn up in the back of the iPad Air, partly because it had been rumored and partly because even though Apple hasn't talked about it as much lately, we all know they're going to you know, push hard into the AR VR thing at some point. And so why not go ahead and put that thing there so that when they're ready, you'll be ready but of course, I say that and I know the answer. So you'll go out and buy another freaking iPad. What am I thinking? I'm sorry. I'm not saying that's why they didn't do it. But if they've got no real use for it right now, there's no point in future proofing that device. I'll tell you the thing that was interesting to me. They said that the iPad is the most popular iPad they have. They put colors in the iPad Air. I'm a little surprised <laughs> they don't bubble gum the uh, like they did with the um, uh, what was the what was the phone? The iPhone 5C iPhone 5C was right. one of the first phones that came in like a wide array of colors. And it was the cheap phone. It wasn't really cheap, but it was the cheap phone as far as what Apple was offering at the time. And they bubble gum that up. And then, you know, now they're like, here's I the most popular the, iPad. Oh, go ahead. I have an answer for you. Okay. The iPad Air has the flat edge where you can see the color. The iPad does not. So the only way you would see the color is if you were looking at an unprotected back of an iPad. This is my theory. Okay. And the the five the five C had the flat edge, so you could see it there. But like if you put if you put an iPad uh, Air, the new Air or the iPad Pro into the Magic Keyboard, you can still see the edge. Okay. You, you've got it in a case. You can see the color. There. All right. How's that for an answer? That's not a bad answer. I mean, the other the other, the other answer, I suppose, is the uh, the other answer is the upsell. Although it's a much higher upsell that time because what is it? It's three twenty nine for the uh, starter iPad and it's five ninety nine for the starter iPad 99. Air. That's a that's yeah. a that's a yeah. that's a bit of a bigger gulf, you know. Just because I like sea it's, foam. That's a that's a shade of green, by the way. But, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. You and your colors. You said periwinkle before we started recording. I did. Recording. That's right. I forgot. I, I was thinking that was a callback, and then I realized, well, no, because people didn't hear that, so they have no idea why he's like. Oh, that's a shade of a color. Anyway, I'm sorry. You were saying. <laughs> I, I do find it uh, interesting how important color is. And it, it gets back to that thing of, of you know, if you put fins on a car in the 1950s, people would buy that new new car with the fins. I mean, I, I can't stand it when I buy a new device and it looks exactly like my old one. I was just yeah. like, ah, oh, it doesn't even look new. You know, there's just something about it. So I bought a red watch. It's like, okay. red. Oh, wait, the new one? Red. Yeah. Oh, really? So you, you're waiting for the, uh, so you got the product red series six. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's red. Do you never Can't. worry about, I understand, but uh, so this is something I brought up uh, on something and maybe Mac OS Ken earlier this week. My two Apple watches so far have been the brushed aluminum because I worry about what I'm going to wear them with. I have things that I'm uh. not going to be able to wear a red watch with, or that I'm not necessarily going to want to wear a red watch with. Well, I mean, if we ever get to go back out again, because right now, who cares? We're lucky I have pants on for this. And I'm only telling you I have pants on. You don't actually know. You don't actually know. Do you not worry about whether or not you're going to be able to match the red thing? Or are you just like, oh, I don't care. It'll be a lovely LBD. Is that what it's called? A little black dress. I'll have the little black dress and the, and the popping red watch. And I don't care. So I, I make a habit now of trying to make the most garish color combinations because it annoys my husband, Steve. <laughs> so one of my favorite outfits is like I've got a, a like bright yellow shorts. I'll put a purple top with that or maybe some lime green uh -huh. uh, and then throw, you know, throw the, a red watch on top of that. I, I haven't checked to see what it's going to do all, to all of my uh, my watch bands. So some of them might look putrid, but, you know. Yeah. But that, that'll just be good. Yeah, exactly. It's not, right. The description you were giving me, though, sounded like Easter threw up. Oh, yeah. There's a little bit of Easter, some Neapolitan going on. I can nice. send you photos if you like. I, All right. I post them when I irritate Steve. <laughs> I do have one other question for you before we, uh, before we part ways for the day. Um, the uh, Apple surprised everybody by saying, hey, by the way, you're getting updates for everything except for the Mac uh, uh, tomorrow. They said that Tuesday. Tuesday. They said Wednesday, yeah. updates for everything. 
I don't want to get into the uh, developer thing because I did that earlier this week with August. Have you updated everything slash anything yet? To the best of my ability, my Apple Watch Series 4, it just says, no, I I can't, what? Really? It it, it can see my watch and then I tell it to check for update and it spins for a while. It goes, no, I can't. Sorry, busy. Don't want to. But everything else updated my uh, two iPads and my my Series Five watch and my phone. Okay. So and uh, anything yeah. that I need to do, I need to go ahead and update to iOS fourteen for my phone because I haven't yet. Figured it'd probably be this weekend. But if you tell me right now that that's what I have to do next, then I will. Yeah, you know, we all got so burned the last time. It's 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 hard to tell. Um, I haven't run any anything too catastrophic. I, I did have a problem with my watch that uh, the screen was at half brightness. And I like my all of my devices at 100% brightness. Every single device, every display, I can't stand to look at a display that's not full brightness. And it was half brightness, and I couldn't figure out how to fix it. So I rebooted it, and it fixed it. So it's fine now. Okay. That's the only big bug. Scribble is not as reliable as it should be. Hmm. I was playing around with that a little bit. That's the handwriting recognition. Yeah. And I was writing in a in a text field, and it it, it draws out what you wrote, and then the the letters slowly fade, and then they turn into text. Right. Only they faded in different order than I wrote them. So I saw like the later thing I'd written fade before the earlier word, and so the words ended up out of order when it was done. It's like, hmm, that's, that's probably weird. not going to work. Maybe, yeah. Maybe that's a uh, maybe that's a crypto thing. Maybe it's you know maybe it's protecting you. I'm I'm just making stuff up. I don't know. I have one last, really last question this time. Uh, This is the second event that we've had where everybody didn't have to go there and there was no applause and there was no, you know, uh, shots of the crowd and and it was shorter. And yet it felt like there was still more information than a regular event. If you had your druthers, does everybody, you know, once once we're past hashtag these uncertain times, does everybody uh, start going back out to Cupertino or are we uh, at digital events from now on? As someone who doesn't go to WWDC, it, the online stuff is great. It's tighter, uh, more more rehearsed, and and you know it's a it's a production, and I like it just fine. I did go to AltConf uh, before hashtag these uncertain times, and it was it was fantastic. So I would like to go do that again. Uh, that's WWDC adjacent. If you haven't been to it, it's a free conference. You can donate if you want to. It was wonderful. It was really fun. Got to meet a bunch of people and had a really good time. But um, for the sitting at home thing, I would rather it be the produced version personally. All right, go go annoy your husband. <laughs> I will.